the end times. According to our Prophet, peace be upon him, in the Hadiths, the end times will be an age of moral degeneration when hunger and poverty reach desperate levels and when people spend their lives in fear and tension because of anarchy, terror, conflict and disorder. A time when killings, suicides and slaughter rise to the worst possible level and when fraud, cheating and injustice rule. All unlawful things will be regarded as lawful in the end times and all kinds of perversion will be practiced openly across the world. People will completely turn away from the moral values of the Quran and the result will be a world ruled by lovelessness, ruthlessness and selfishness. Allah will be openly denied, surely he is beyond that, and perverted ideologies such as atheism, Darwinism and materialism will spread and be portrayed as scientific in order to turn people away from belief in Allah. The number of believers in the world will be very small and they will suffer terrible oppression, persecution and cruelty because of their beliefs. Hazrat Mahdi will appear at such a difficult time and wage his intellectual struggle in that climate. Under these harsh conditions of the end times, and like all the prophets sent in the past, Hazrat Mahdi will be subjected to false accusations, tested by various difficulties and troubles and be exposed to traps set by unbelievers. What makes Hazrat Mahdi struggle different from the times of other prophets is that in the end times, the generation and godlessness will be more widespread than ever before and will pervade the whole world. Nonetheless, however, by Allah's leave, the vile and disbelief-filled system of the unbelievers will be defeated. No matter how widespread moral degeneration and how fierce the pressure on Hazrat Mahdi may be, Nothing by Allah's leave can prevent Hazrat Mahdi emerging victorious from his struggle for the truth. By Allah's leave, the two holy figures of the end times, the Prophet Jesus and Hazrat Mahdi will totally eliminate this perverted mindset and be instrumental in the moral values of Islam coming to rule the world. By Allah's leave, this great promise of our Lord's will come true in the century in which we are living. As Allah has revealed in the words of the Qur'an, I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. Allah will not give the disbelief any way against the believers. The snares set for an oppression on believers will never succeed. By Allah's leave, when the Prophet Jesus returns to earth and Hazrat Mahdi appears, True believers will support these holy figures and no matter how few their numbers, they will install the moral values of the Qur'an across the world. At what age will Hazrat Mahdi commence his struggle? Our Prophet peace be upon him reveals in the Hadiths 
that Hazrat Mahdi salam, will begin his work aimed at establishing the dominion of Islamic moral values at the age of 30 to 40. He will be sent when he is between 30 and 40 years old. Hazrat Mahdi salam, is one of my children. He is around 40. The places where Hazrat Mahdi salam, will wage his struggle. Hazrat Mahdi salam, Istanbul period. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, A man of the people of Medina, a great city, will come to Mecca. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Six things will happen to this community. The sixth is the conquest of Medina. I asked, O Messenger of Allah, which Medina? He said, Constantinople, Istanbul. As revealed in the hadith of our Prophet, peace be upon him, Hazrat Mahdi salam, will be born in Medina, the dictionary definition of which is a large city. According to other information provided in the hadiths, the main center of Hazrat Mahdi's salam, intellectual struggle will be Istanbul. In his commentary, Imam al qurtubi says that Hazrat Mahdi salam, will emerge from the western part of the countries of Islam. In his book, Al-Isha'a li Ashrat al-Sa'a, the great Sunni scholar Barzanji says that Hazrat Mahdi salam, will come and spiritually conquer Istanbul. We are told in al qurtubis commentary that he will emerge from the countries of the Maghreb and from there will come and cross the sea. Hazrat Mahdi salam, will be born in a great city, or Medina, in the west of the countries of Islam. And when the time for his struggle arrives, he will leave it and cross the sea to Istanbul. The hadiths even refer to a ridge by saying that a dry path across the sea will open up for Hazrat Mahdi salam. We are then told that Hazrat Mahdi salam, will enter Istanbul by that bridge. During the spiritual conquest of Constantinople, he, Hazrat Mahdi salam, will plant a standard when he goes to make ablution for the morning prayer, and the water will divide in two and withdraw from him. He will cross to the other side through this path that opens and say, O oh people, learn from this. The sea has parted its waters for us, just as it did for the tribe of Israel. Then they will utter the takbir, Allah is great, again and again, and with twelve takbirs, the twelve towers of the city will collapse. The hadith also state that Hazrat Mahdi salam, will appear with the sacred relics of our Prophet peace be upon him. And the place where these holy relics are preserved is, of course, Istanbul. It is related from Abdullah ibn Shurafa that Hazrat Mahdi salam, will have the banner of our Prophet peace be upon him with him. He will appear with the camel hair banner of the Prophet peace be upon him. That banner has four corners, is unstitched and black in color. There is a halo on it. It has not been unfurled since the death of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, but it will be opened when Hazrat Mahdi salam, appears. As for the signs, he, Hazrat Mahdi, will have with him the shirt, the sword, and the banner of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. That banner has never been unfurled since the death of the Prophet peace be upon him and it will not be unfurled until the appearance of Hazrat Mahdi salam. Bedi Uzaman Sa'id Nursi has also said, in the light of the hadith of our Prophet peace be upon him, that Hazrat Mahdi salam, will emerge from the erstwhile center of the Caliphate, in other words, from Istanbul. Now, the difference in the narrations about individuals like Hazrat Mahdi salam, and their meaning is this, those who expounded hadiths applied the text of the hadiths 
to their own interpretations and commentaries. For example, since the center of power at that time was Damascus or Medina, they imagined the events connected with Azamati and Sufyan in places like Basra, Kufa and Syria, which were in the region of those centers, and expounded them accordingly. Since in early times the centers of the Caliphate were in Iraq, Damascus and Medina, on their own interpretations, the narrators showed these events as occurring close to the center of the Islamic government, as though it was always going to remain thus, and said, Aleppo and Damascus. They added their own details to the succinct predictions of the Hadith. As Bedi Uzaman has said, the scholars who handed down the Hadiths of the end times described the events of the end times in terms of the headquarters of the Caliphate in their own days. The headquarters of the Caliphate have changed many times from the days of our Prophet peace be upon him to the present. Damascus, Aleppo, Kufa, Mecca and last of all Istanbul. Every scholar has therefore described these places such as Iraq, Damascus, Kufa and Medina the centers of the Caliphate in their own days, as where Hazamati will appear. That is the reason for the difference in the accounts regarding the place where Hazamati will come from. However, the common point in the accounts regarding the place where the events of the end times will take place is that it will be in the center of the Caliphate. Bedi Uzman's statements indicate that he reached the same conclusion. The final headquarters of the Caliphate was Istanbul, The Caliphate was officially abolished in the early days of the last century and never moved anywhere else. The two banners of the Prophet peace be upon him, his sword and shirt and other holy relics are all in Istanbul. In conclusion, Istanbul is the only city to maintain this spiritual title. Therefore, it is from here that people expect Hazamati to appear. Allah knows best. It also appears from the hadiths handed down from our Prophet peace be upon him and statements made by Badi Uzuman Sa'id Nursi that it is from Istanbul that Hazamati will intellectually defeat those godless and satanic philosophies such as Darwinism, materialism and atheism that strive against the moral values of the Quran. Followers in far distant places will swear allegiance to Hazrat Mahdi He will intellectually neutralize oppression and oppressors and will stabilize countries and Almighty Allah will cause him to spiritually capture Istanbul. Allah will capture Constantinople, Istanbul through his beloved friends Hazrat Mahdi He will lift sickness and sorrow from them. The period when the oath of allegiance will be taken to Hazrat Mahdi in Mecca. The period when Hazrat Mahdi will be in Mecca is a significant one in terms of the coming about of the global dominion of Quranic moral values. It is in his time in Mecca that leading Muslims will express their love for and spiritual devotion to him in the name of all Muslims. At the same time, the Meccan period equates to the final years of Hazrat Mahdi's struggle. Bedi Uzaman Sa'id Nursi refers to this time as the time of politics and governance. Allah has selected the city of Mecca as the place where believers will swear allegiance to Hazrat Mahdi since it is a very holy site of great spiritual importance to Muslims. Allah knows the truth. Some of the hadiths on the subject read, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, A man of the people of Medina, a great city, will come to Mecca. Some of the people of Mecca will come to him, bring him out and swear allegiance to him against his will between the corner and the makam. As a Mahdi will appear in Mecca in the evening with the standard, mantle, sword, signs, light and beautiful expression of our Prophet peace be upon him. A group from the people of Mecca will bring him out 
from where he is against his wishes. They will swear allegiance to him between Al-Hajar, Al-Aswad and Abraham's Makam. Hazrat Mahdi's a.s. Jerusalem period After his Meccan period, Hazrat Mahdi a.s. will live for a long time in Jerusalem. There he will rebuild the temple of the Prophet Solomon a.s. and treat Christians according to the moral values of the Gospels, Jews according to the Torah, and Muslims according to the Quran. Hazrat Mahdi's a.s. will descend to Beit al-Maqdis, Jerusalem, and the nation will live for a long time with those who come from his Ahl al-Bayt. When Hazrat Mahdi a.s. is performing the morning prayer with the believers at the Beit al-Maqdis, Jerusalem, he will introduce the Prophet Jesus a.s. who has appeared, and the Prophet Jesus a.s. will place his hands on his shoulder and say, The call to prayer has been issued for you. So you must lead it. And finally, Hazamati will lead the Prophet Jesus and the believers in prayer. Hazrat Mahdi's Roman period. It is also revealed in the Hadiths that at a later time, Hazrat Mahdi will spiritually conquer Rome. In other words, he will install the moral values of Islam there through his intellectual struggle. Hazrat Mahdi Islam and his students will capture Rome with tasbih, praise Allah, and takbir, declaration of the greatness of Allah, of Allah's greatness. How long will Hazrat Mahdi Islam struggle last? It is also revealed in the hadith of our Prophet peace be upon him that Hazrat Mahdi a.s. will wage his struggle until he completely neutralizes all atheistic philosophies and imposes the moral values of Islam on the whole world. He will continue his struggle until people return to the truth. According to the hadith of our Prophet peace be upon him, Azza Mahdi will wage a difficult intellectual struggle against atheistic philosophies. He will adopt the most rational paths during that struggle. He will get fast results and there will be great intelligence and wisdom in his actions. The methods employed by Azza Mahdi will be highly effective and unlike any seen ever before. But Azza Mahdi will work no miracles in his struggle because Hazrat Mahdi will wage a struggle in the sphere of natural causes, in other words, under natural conditions. Some people imagine that Hazrat Mahdi will struggle in a mystical framework and think that he will perform extraordinary marvels. They believe that Hazrat Mahdi is not a normal human being, but rather a most extraordinary entity They think there will be a cloud and angels above his head that people will see when they look at him and that the angels will introduce him to people. They also picture him within that mystical framework as someone who is invulnerable to tanks, rockets, guns and even nuclear weapons. The fact is, however, that all these beliefs regarding Hazamahdi's are mistaken. 
Allah has revealed in the Quran that many people expect the messengers to be superhuman entities, but that they are in fact just normal human beings. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. We never sent any messengers before you who did not eat food and walk in the marketplace, but we have made some of you a trial for others to see if you will be steadfast. Your Lord sees everything. Those who do not expect to meet us say, Why have angels not been sent down to us? Why do we not see our Lord? They have become arrogant about themselves and are excessively insolent. There will be no angel above Hazamati's head, plainly visible to everyone and calling out, This is the Mahdi, follow him. Allah reveals in the Quran that people will only be able to see angels on the Day of Judgment. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. They say, Why do you not bring angels to us if you are telling the truth? The angels only descend with the truth, and then they would be granted no reprieve. In addition, in the Hadith, our Prophet peace be upon him speaks of Azamati being exposed to oppression, torture, and persecution by the system of the Dajjal, of his being imprisoned and living among difficulties and troubles and threat of death, of his being chained by his hands and feet, of his being placed in solitary confinement, and of disappearing from sight from time to time. If Hazamati really were an extraordinary entity, invulnerable to guns and tanks, and who called people to Islam owing to the angels above his head, then how could he be imprisoned or tortured and persecuted, or face great difficulties? Who could ever threaten, imprison, or torture someone who is invulnerable to any gun or other weapon? If Hazamati really were such a fantastical entity, there would never be times when he disappeared, and he would have no need to hide himself away from sight. Even our Prophet, peace be upon him, received a sword blow, and one of his holy teeth was thus broken. Many prophets have been martyred on Allah's path, and many believers and companions have been martyred in war or lost hands, eyes, arms, or other parts of their bodies. In the same way that no prophet has ever come with supernatural features, so Hazamati will be a guide with no such attributes and will not wage his trouble in any such extraordinary manner. Hazamati will oppose the system of the Dajjal in order to ensure that the moral values of Islam rule the world. He will wage a great struggle against materialism and Darwinism. Will teach people to live by the Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet peace be upon him, and will establish unity among all the Muslims of the world. And by Allah's leave, he will achieve all these without eliminating the need for free will by an intellectual struggle using reason and good conscience. Indeed. That is where the superiority of Azamati al Islam, whom Allah says will be rewarded with paradise, actually lies. Azamati al Islam will never be worn down by all the difficulties, pressures, traps, and tests he faces. Although, with a few exceptions, the whole world will oppose him, he will persist in his struggle with his love of Allah and bright faith, and will achieve a total global success. All through history, a ruthless campaign has been waged against all messengers and true believers. All unbelievers and idolaters that have ever lived have opposed the true faith preached by messengers 
imagining that this would harm their own interests. This is a method employed by unbelievers for the same purpose over hundreds of years. We are told in the Quran that all the messengers who have preached the true faith have been the subject of such false accusations as self-interest, madness, pride, and sorcery. Our Prophet peace be upon him also says in the Hadiths that all the messengers after him will be exposed to various troubles and slanders for preaching the true faith sent by Allah. Allah says that the state of affairs set out in the Quran is his law. He tells us that all Muslims may be tested by similar difficulties, slanders and persecution. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. You will be tested in your wealth and in yourselves, and you will hear many abusive words from those given the book before you, and from those who are idolaters. But if you are steadfast and guard against evil, that is the most resolute course to take. But again, under the law of Allah, every trap set for the believers has been thwarted right from the outset and every false accusation has been created to be exposed as hollow. Allah tells us in the Quran that these initiatives taken by unbelievers will always end in favor of believers. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. When those who are unbelievers were plotting against you to imprison you or kill you or expel you, they were plotting and Allah was plotting. But Allah is the best of plotters. Allah will defend those who believe. Allah does not love any thankless traitor. That is your reward. Allah always confounds the schemes of the disbelievers. The state of affairs that has persisted throughout the course of history will of course also apply to Hazrat Mahdi and his community. However, every step taken with the intention of harming Hazrat Mahdi will actually turn out in his favor. All measures taken to oppose Hazrat Mahdi will lead to him being better known across the world, to his virtues becoming even clearer, and to him enjoying ever greater success. Because the period involved is the end times, the negative forces opposed to Hazamati al Islam will wage the most ruthless struggle in history against him. Allah has created unbelievers along with believers in all periods of history, and unbelievers have always waged a ruthless struggle against believers. Under the law of Allah, communities of believers have always been small in number, while unbelievers as required by the test, have always constituted the majority. Again, under the law of Allah, the community of Azamahdi and Islam in the end times will number some 300 people, and with these few individuals, he will strive to bring about the global dominion of the moral values of Islam. The effectiveness of the campaign that a religion will wage against Azamahdi and Islam can better be seen when considering the fact that by the use of technology, the impact of both visual and written media, and also the means of communication such as the internet and satellites, have reached their most advanced points in the end times in which we are living. Mr. Adnan Akhtar gave an example of the impact of the negative forces opposed to the system of the Mahdi in an interview. The system of the Mahdi will encounter intense incidents that have never been seen in the world before. It will confront things that have never been seen in the history of the world. That is because, in the time of the Prophets, they used to produce corruption in only one region. For instance, in a city of perhaps 100,000 people, or 50,000, or in a population of 1 million. But now they produce corruption in a population of 7 billion. There are billions of deviant people against the system of the Mahdi. It is in such a climate that Hazamahdi will begin work, and he will wage his struggle under those conditions. Unbelievers, hypocrites, will leave Hazamahdi's community, idolaters who emerge from among Muslims and attack Hazamahdi, and materialists, atheists, and Darwinists representing a religion 
will all join forces against the system of the Mahdi and use all the technological and communications means at their disposal to work against him. During the time of Azamahdi on Islam, there will therefore be a harsh and intense climate of struggle made incomparably greater than those in any society that ever existed before with the means possessed by the deniers. However, as Allah promised some 1,400 years ago, Azamahdi Islam and his few followers will overcome all these unbelieving societies. Because of the intensity of the irreligion in the end times, Azamahdi Islam will initially wage his intellectual struggle in secret. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, has revealed in the Hadiths that Hazamahdi Islam will carry out his activities in secret in the early period when people have not yet recognized him. One of the main reasons for this is that the period that Hazamahdi Islam will emerge into is one in which the effects of irreligion and moral degeneration will reach the most serious dimensions. Hazamahdi Islam will not appear and will not be recognized by people at a most harsh time when unbelievers harbor an intense enmity toward believers and religious moral values and work against them both openly and in secret. This is how the Hadiths say that Hazamahdi Islam will perform his early activities in secret. At night, he will be engaged in worship while he will be hidden during the day. From Naj al Balagha, the Lord of the Believers, peace be upon him, said, When he hides away from people, not even trackers will be able to see any trace of him. Hazrat Mahdi al Islam will not appear in society during this time, he will meet with only a very few people. Azamahdi al Islam will certainly retire into occultation and turn away from the public during that occultation. Azad Hussain b Ali al Islam says, Azamahdi al Islam will disappear from sight for a time. Azamahdi's al Islam remaining secret and unrecognized at such a time will by Allah's leave be instrumental in him being protected from attacks by unbelievers and allowing him to work more easily. But Allah will hide him as a Mahdi al Islam from people against the oppression, cruelty and waste of people's earthly desires. His having few people alongside him and being opposed by the majority will make Hazamahdi's al Islam struggle even more valuable. They consist of a group including women of 314 people. They will overcome all tyrants. Their hearts are like iron and they are lions by day and devout believers by night. Neither those before nor after them can match them in self-sacrifice. It is narrated from Muhammad ibn Hanafi that their numbers are those of the people of Badr in the same way that those who went before could not surpass them. Those who come after will not be able to catch them. Their numbers are the number of those who crossed the river with Saul. It is a requirement of the law of Allah revealed in the Quran that the number of Hazamahdi's Islam supporters and helpers should be very small. This has been the same in the communities of believers that have ever existed. It is revealed in the Quran that the number of true believers around the prophets has always been small. For example, only a very few of the young people in his community had faith in the Prophet Moses I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. No one believed in Moses except for a few of his people, out of fear that Pharaoh and the elders would persecute them.
One verse reveals that Pharaoh said this of the small number of people who believed in the Prophet Moses salam. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. These people are a small group. Another verse reveals how the number of people believing in the Prophet Noah salam, was also very small. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. But those who believed with him were only few. We are also told in the Quran that few people believed in the Prophet Lot when a terrible disaster struck his people. Allah saved only those family members who believed in the Prophet Lot and even excluding his own wife. We are told that only a few disciples and nobody else believed in the Prophet Jesus It is also revealed in the Quran that the numbers of those known as the people of the cave were also very small. Throughout the course of history, people have preferred to keep their distance from true believers, exposed to false allegations and smear campaigns. This is of course a grave error on the part of these people, but because of that error a great many people will also refuse to follow Hazrat Mahdi al-Islam out of a fear of the kind of pressure and difficulties they may face and they will distance themselves from his community. It is most surprising that the number of people who have faith in such a person who calls on others to believe in Allah and perform such great services for the religion will be few in number. Since Hazrat Mahdi is someone whose devotion to Allah, purity and superior virtues are very striking and who will perform many services of great benefit to Muslims. One would expect a great many people to gather around such a virtuous person whose moral values are compared to those of our Prophet peace be upon him, who heeds only the approval of Allah and who performs sincere work for people's happiness in this world and the hereafter. One would expect every Muslim who sees such a person's virtues and good works would want to be alongside and support him. The fact that the number of people supporting Hazrat Mahdi is very small, despite all this, is most thought-provoking. It means that although the people in the society in which Hazrat Mahdi lives and sees his superior virtues and the auspicious work he performs, they will still keep their distance from him because of the pressure of a religion and out of calculations of self-interest. The state of affairs which will arise as a result of the law of Allah will actually make Hazamahdi's Mahdi's struggle even more valuable. Allah will be victorious over a great many communities to Hazamahdi Mahdi and his small number of followers. The fact that Hazamahdi Mahdi wages his struggle under very difficult conditions and with the help of very few people but still achieves the global dominion of Islam, will bestow upon him superiority in both this world and in the hereafter. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. How many a small force has triumphed over a much greater one by Allah's permission. Allah is with the steadfast.